good morning, almost good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you all here today and appreciate you coming and spending a few minutes of your day to learn about One Aviation. My name is Ken Ross, I'm the president of One Aviation. I have the pleasure of introducing our chairman, Mason Holland, and our new CEO, Alan Platt. So I'm going to let them describe to you and discuss with you what One Aviation is and what the concept is. And this is less of a presentation than it is a question and answer and, and really a, a conversation with what we think is a very innovative, forward-reaching, forward-thinking new company. So, at this stage, I'd like to introduce Mason Holland, Chairman of One Aviation. It's a little better, so, hey, welcome to Sun Fun. So I heard there was a little weather here yesterday. So uh, we came in this morning and it was beautiful. Did you come in this morning, John? Yeah, so it was a nice ride in. So um, we've got some Eclipse guys here. We've got some Cirrus guys here. We've got some soon to be Kestrel guys here. We've got a lot of things going on, so it's very exciting. Uh, I just want to take a couple of minutes and tell you, uh, just give you sort of an overview of what you may have heard through the media and whatnot and what's going on in maybe clarify a couple of things and bring a couple of things up to the table, and then we're going to have a, a discussion and chat about uh, what we're doing with One Aviation. So uh, uh, I can tell you that there's no more passionate group of people in general aviation than the group that's running the now, the, the now formed One Aviation. And our concept with One Aviation is to take, we're going to start with two core products, which is the Eclipse, which is now in production, uh, and we're now selling and delivering eclipses. As everybody knows, over the last uh, five or six years, we've been working on that project. It's doing very, very well as we grow into the market. And we're also adding in the Kestrel product, which is still under development, and we're still working to bring that to market. That's a couple of years down the road. As two core products under one aviation. And it all came together, I guess, about, because we started talking a year? Has it been a year? Year and a half. Year so. Okay. so I've known Alan a long time. I remember taking my first Civic, so number 215, back in 2002, up in Duluth. Anybody been to Duluth? Anybody wish you were in Duluth now? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are sweating like crazy up here, so it's so sad. So I smelled it. <laughs> but uh, uh, so so I grew up through that family, and I wanted to to soon fly a jet, so I. Put it in order to buy an Eclipse, wasn't able to get my Eclipse for a couple of reasons, and uh, ended up with a couple of extra Eclipses when we, when we ended up with the company. And we've got great customers from the Eclipse around the table here with us today. So we're very proud of, of that product. And uh, we see a lot of people in general aviation that want to move into that next product. And how do we bring them along? And so how can we take a couple of products, maybe move on a couple of more products, Get some economies of scale as a company from a financial perspective, but also drive this passion of introducing people into the right product for their needs at the right time. And that's what One Aviation is designed to do. So, very excited about the prospects as a company, and, uh, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. So, last week, uh, Ken and Alan uh, were over in Germany at Air Friedrichstaffen, and we did the announcements, and you guys saw some of the press release and whatnot. Uh, it was widely touted in the press as a merger, and it's really a combining of companies. Uh, one aviation will be a holding company, hopefully with multiple products under it as we get rolling in the coming months. And uh, we'll take advantage of combined sales staff, combined manufacturing talents, supply chain talents, all across the board, they'll drive some efficiencies. So uh, we're excited about that, and also deliver a more uh, comprehensive message to the general aviation market about what general aviation should be and should continue to be in the future. So, uh, you know, I remember coming into Sun and Fun, um, you know, back in 2006, 2007, you know, there were lines of people flying into land, and you don't get that feeling as much anymore. And uh, we really need to see general aviation come back up in that other direction, and we're the guys that are passionate enough to try to drive it in that in that direction going forward. So pretty excited about that. So with that said, uh, I'm gonna see if Alan wants to chime in for a couple of words and then we'll open it up to some questions. Thank you. And obviously for me, making it only a couple of words is the challenge. Uh, okay. One aviation, the, the idea here is a long time coming, and, and this, this for me goes back a couple of decades, of thinking about how do you have the right financial 
structure, the right product structure, the right manufacturing structure, the right way to interface with customers so that we can grow general aviation. We're obviously all, I would say anybody who's not a big fan of general aviation we leave right now because we're not invited here. We're all big fans of general aviation, but we sit back and watch things happen out here and scratch our heads and come up with uh, ideas about what's wrong and, and what it would take to fix it, which are very often just wrong. You know, the, the problem with general aviation is not that people don't want to fly. There's tremendous value in building aviation into your life. It's not that people don't have some place to go. Obviously, they got a lot of places to go. The problem is us, how we run our businesses, how we fly, how we talk to people outside of aviation. So at a very high level, the idea behind one aviation is how do we build a stronger company that has the resources to talk to customers and deliver different products to customers. How do we do this differently? Again, as we said, the first two core products. Microphone. I can hear myself just fine. <laughs> That's better? I can't hear that any better either. Uh, and we were walking home here, where's Steve? We're going blind as well as deaf. So Steve can't hear in one ear, and has a challenge hearing in the other. I'm getting to that point with one ear, so we have these conversations back and forth where we're both saying, what did you say? <laughs> aviation. We haven't made our earphones quite enough. But so the idea behind one aviation is how do we change how we do all of this? Uh, Basically, talk about mergers versus consolidation. There's lots of reasons in, in how all these things get put together, whether it's debt structure or FAA issues or shareholder issues. But the future will be one aviation is what people will see as the company, and Eclipse will be the family of airplanes that look like Eclipse airplanes with a variety of differences, and Kestrel airplanes, and probably some others that we'll add in along the way. The reason we're so excited about this is because we believe, and as Mason said, it's a couple of years coming, we believe that it answers lots of questions. How do we grow? How do we make sure we're profitable? How do we serve the customer better? How do we sell? And so with these synergies, which Mason kind of walked through, we, we get better financial efficiencies, we get better, we get better productivity out of what we're doing. But the best part, from my point of view, that we change the way we approach the customer. I've had this conversation with some of you already, but this is the goal. The goal is to be able to go to the customer and say, what do you need, instead of, here's what we've got. And anytime you're a one product company, you can only say, here's what we've got, this is here. The right conversation is, how are you going to use the airplane? What will this do for you? And we can do that with easier with a broader product company. Now, when you do that, the jumping conclusion here, what we hope everybody's answer is, I want one of each tend to offer a range of products, all of which are pretty compelling. As pilots, now I'm going to beat us all up for a moment, and you hear this about doctors, any doctors are familiar with getting beat up this way. Doctors and pilots, one of the things they have in common is they're always sure they're right. right? So they've got to be, if they're making life or death decisions, they've got to be very self-confident. What we do as pilots is we're always sure that therefore anybody who doesn't agree with us is wrong. And that comes down to the type of airplane you fly. Well, you fly that when you're wrong. You should be flying this type. But it turns out that no, that's not the case, that there are multiple products, multiple differences. I've had several people come up to me and say, well, why would you be doing this with Eclipse? Aren't they competition for the Kestrel? Of course they're not competition. It's an alternative. It's the same customer in terms of needing transportation, certain kinds of, of, of abilities to afford that transportation. And they've got a decision to make. The example I was using last week in Germany is that I, I drive a four-door Jeep with Wrangler with big tires on it. It's not the fast, it's not very maneuverable. When you maneuver, it kind of wobbles all over, but I like it. My wife drives a Porsche 911. There's no time when she's sitting in her Porsche that she looks at my Jeep and says, gee, I can afford a used one of those. I can like, just get something used, I can get a bigger whatever. It doesn't work that way. You buy the product that you need, the, the product that fits what you're looking at doing. But of course, then it goes beyond that. And once you get a product with certain capability, your capability grows. So you find out that if it goes faster, you go further. If it carries more, you take more with you. It goes in and out of shorter runways, you go in and out of shorter runways. So we want to do all of that in growing this product. The next part about it is just the product company, other services. And this will be either things that we'll look at doing, or we'll look at partnering with 
want to see change. How do we communicate general aviation to people outside the industry? That's the, the first part of the education part. How do we teach them about the airplanes? How do we teach them about learning to fly? It doesn't mean we're going to teach them how to fly, although we'll teach them how to get type ready. How do we help them learn to operate the airplane safely? How do we help them finance it, insure it? Go places, all of those kinds of things that keep people more involved in aviation so that we can bring in people that are currently unaware. I think most of you would agree that the typical person that you run into in the outside world has no concept of what it's like to own and operate an airplane. Just no concept. We have to change that understanding. We have to go outside of that. So while I talk about this being about products, we put this because we start with. It's really about more than that. It's about how do we go beyond the products. So this is going to be a transition. We're going to start with a bunch of questions and answers. I'm sure that some of your answers, some of your questions we won't have answers for, but we'll do a lot of listening. Um, and we'll see where this all ends up. Pretty excited. I'm looking forward to uh, starting to learn to fly. But I'm going to turn it over again to the president of Eclipse, and there's a one who's always telling me that there won't be any problems. Why don't we do this? Instead of continuing to talk about what our vision is, why don't you ask us some questions? There's nothing that's often that I'm not going to tell you we're going to have the answers for you. But we're going to do our best to, to try to answer what your question may be and, and get a little bit more in depth as to why this company is so unique and, and we think uh, revolutionary. Any questions? This will be real easy for no questions. Yes. I just make a comment. I'm pretty enthused knowing Mason and and now I'm here from the past, and uh, it sounds pretty impressive to me. And I'm just a GA guy with no axe to grind. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's where we'd like to start, right there. <laughs> so any other compliments with the <laughs> Thank you very much. Go ahead. Sikorsky's role. Sikorsky's role. Okay, the answer there was we'd like to uh, What? Uh, Sikorsky was a fantastic partner. They came in, as you know, with like, Sikorsky was a great partner of ours. They came in several years ago uh, through the efforts of Jeff Needham, who at that time was the president of the company. And throughout the last several years, they participated in, in helping us with supply chain management, with engineering, with production, research, and so forth. So again, great, great partner. But as you've all made read in the paper recently, the press recently, United Technologies, the parent company of Sikorsky, has decided that Sikorsky needs to stay on our company. In other words, it's going to be a divestment from UTC of Sikorsky. At that time, Sikorsky had several core business, uh, nine core businesses. Let's be one of them. Here we go. They had a medical uh, uh, lift pipe program and so forth. And so through our discussions, what we decided to form on aviation at that stage, Sikorsky, as our partner, has stepped out and is going to concentrate on their core business. And we thank them for their tremendous support. We continue to have some tremendous support from Sikorsky as well as the UTC family, correct the end. Very, very strong partner of ours, and that relationship will continue at this stage and no longer sure what we're in 180 issues. Now, let me add to that that, that I thought the, the timing of this was important. So, as, as Mason's been working with Sikorsky over time, and we've talked, been, been talking about how this would happen, it was important for Sikorsky to make a decision one way or another. And since, because I was reading the stuff in the press at the same time uh, and asking questions. said that you can ask anything and we won't necessarily answer it. Um, many of you have heard the way I answer some of these questions, and so I'll answer them very broadly, even though it sounds specific. Someday, well, you don't know what's coming up. Supersonic, transatlantic, sleep swell, vertical takeoff. <laughs> no, we're not going to tell you what's next. There's all kinds of possibilities. But obviously, that there, there, are, there are products that will be similar not in terms of the product, but in terms of the customer. And then we will certainly be looking at the vertical side of the the next version. Yeah, you were next. Uh, I, I 
know these guys. I know the airplane. I've, I've flown at a thousand hours. I love the airplane. And these guys are great businessmen. And you got a, you're an airplane guy. Now. So how are you going to change this company? And this this aircraft is, uh, when I speak of the deep place, is a lot different than your concept of a jet. It's serious. And, you know, uh, this is different for you. So how are you going to uh, increase sales and make this uh, successful, and I'd like to talk about funding sources, you know, which has to do with the, the future of the company. Thank you. Thank you. Since you have the mic, I assume everybody heard the question, I'll, and I'll answer the airplane side of the first. Uh, I already mentioned that for decades, I've had a view of this family of airplanes, and we've had various partners come and go. With these guys, we have partners that also believe in that. Family airplanes. And I do get that question about obviously, you know, well, what about the Sears jet, which I do believe is going to be successful. I obviously have a strong affinity uh, 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 for that airplane. You know, it's uh, that particular Steve and some of the other guys from the, the festival side that are next Sears, you know, the ones that are doing that airplane. But, but I don't think that changes much for Eclipse. I think there will be a lot of Sears jets sold, and as people move up to them, they will then want to move up to something else. And so what the Eclipse offers is sort of that next step up, if I can my fingers here. So here, here's a customer, they want to move up. Some of them will move up to a Sears jet. When they're done with their Sears jet, they'll move up to an Eclipse. Some will decide they want to skip that step and they'll move straight to an Eclipse. Um, there is sort of a natural progression. Uh, my first uh, aviation experience was in a 182, and then I had a Cessna 140 and up through the 182RG and Series and so on. I've now been flying a Piper Meridian for several years, I don't know, 1,500 hours or something. And I recently flew it out to Maine to have an annual there, a facility out there. And I flew so seriously out there, I flew that back. I love the handling, I love the visibility, I love the, the R9 and the avionics that are in it. And I'm like, I can't blow this slow anymore. I just can't do it. So when you're used to a certain speed, can't, it's hard to go back, unless it's going back because the fun flying something low and slow, which I also do. So 260 knots in the Meridian, and the Meridian is a great airplane. It's, it's been underappreciated for years. Uh, a lot of advantages in that airplane. But it's small up front and awkward getting into it. It's worse than turbulence in the Eclipse and hit your head when you get down low. But it's been a great airplane. I can't go back to slower. So these guys, and I'll Say this play ladies again. Let me fly around the clips for a while. <laughs> and you're going 360 knots. 260 feels really slow. So there is this sort of natural progression that with the Zeros jet it should be around 300 knots. There will be people moving up from 200 knots who will be very happy at 300 knots for a while. And then they'll get used to 360 and they're going to want to go faster. So that, this will be a product for some of those people. And of course, there, there is the whole range. Some people so, you know, I need eight seats, or I need two seats, or I need much faster, much slower. I'm, I'm very comfortable. Well, this, this is sort of the ongoing argument I have to love you. I'm very comfortable that the market for general aviation is so much larger than any of us can conceive that it's just absurd for us to talk about limited markets. Okay, we're done. We're picking on you guys too much. I'll throw some statistics out, though. And I'll tell you the number, and I normally do this as a guessing. Market for single engine piston airplanes in about 1997, when we were all publicly starting the Cirrus for the first time, 96, I guess, was a certain number. And you will run into people who say, well, what percentage of that market can you get? Like on the Cessna, it's Piper, it's Rudy, it's Beach Track, you can't possibly get a very big percentage. What percentage of that market can Cirrus get? And the answer is, 139% of the market five years later. So how do you get 139% of the market? You obviously grow the market. That's what we're going to do with all of this. There's no question that there's plenty of market for all, I think you've heard this phrase about, aren't these crowded spaces? These aren't crowded spaces at all. We all need to do a better job. There are plenty of customers for each of these different products. Some of them look like competition. They're actually just alternatives. When you walk into the, the car dealership, there'll be four different sized cars, and three different sized SUVs and two different pickup trucks. And nobody says, 
Wow, these guys are all crazy that they bought anything. This is the only car that you should buy. That's what we're trying to change in, in general aviation. So that people will look at this as a much larger opportunity and will say, what's the right product for me? In some cases, it'll be an Eclipse jet. In some cases, it'll be a, a Kessel. In some cases, it'll be a Meridian or a Cirrus jet or a helicopter or a float plane or whatever. One of each. And financing, if you'd like. So uh, as part of the transaction that we did, we, the, the funding that we did with Eclipse, the purpose of it was for to provide an exit for Sikorsky because they were looking for an exit. Uh, and uh, they were very nice, and this is something that they asked for a year and a half ago. So they said, when the appropriate time is for the company, you want to do the right thing, we'll stand by you all the way. So we created a transaction, we brought in an institutional investor uh, to fund some additional capital into Eclipse. At the same time, we restructured the shareholder base and got the way that we wanted it to so that we could create one innovation. So even without that funding, Eclipse is fine with the business that we have. You know, I've spent the last five years with Eclipse. I bought it for a relatively attractive price, I think, and uh, compared to what the assets that I acquired. So I've always been very pleased with this transaction. Uh, and uh, it, it does very well. We do, well, we've got a great supportive 280 aircraft owners out there. They're upgrading their planes. We make money when they upgrade their planes. They're buying new planes. We make money when they buy planes. And uh, we provide a great product back to them. I believe they see great value in that. So Clips can move along in that direction and do very well. We can sell into the market wherever we want to go with that. Uh, so we're, we're in very good shape on the Clips side. On the Kestrel side, one of the reasons why we keep the company separate is we want the companies, from a financial perspective, is we want the companies to be able to take advantage of the synergies between the companies without having one company pay for another company's business. So the Kestrel is still a development company. It will still need to be funded with development dollars. It will continue to be pursuing that, right? At the same time, we're running the production company. But both companies will take advantage of the combination of the sales and marketing spread, the management spread, supply chain spread. So Eclipse has a, a robust supply team already. So when Kestrel's ready to ramp up the side of the supply chain, we can provide that service on the Eclipse side, all under a, an umbrella of one aviation. So that's sort of the mantra there. But I want to go, and I want to talk for a second on the on the market a little bit. Now, Alan talks about expanding the market, but there's, there's been no secret. I've been very interested in Alan getting involved with Eclipse since the day that I acquired Eclipse in 09. I think I made a public statement about it. I said, I need to get a guy like Al. Okay, so I got a guy like Al. I got an industry icon. I got a guy that introduced an airplane that's got a parachute on it. There's over 6,000 of those units out there today. It's the most successful signal engine propeller airplane ever introduced into general aviation, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's the only one that counts. So, uh, so I believe it would be factual. Uh, but uh, I mean, he's, he's done a very, very great job. But more importantly, that plane, as great as it is, and it's introduced a lot of people to general aviation, think of what we can do with a product like Eclipse and a complementary product with Kestrel one day, because some people want to dive, go high and fast and, and get there quickly, and that's me. I'm a jet guy, okay? Or some people want to go a little, maybe you need to fly a little slower, so they can carry more stuff, get into a shorter field runway, because that's their lifestyle. They're going back hunting or whatever their, their, their lifestyle mission is there. And there's a product for that as well, too. And there's probably 10 products in between that we can add in as well. But the core is, you take these 6,000 people that own this Cirrus aircraft and say, where are you going next? Right? And I firmly believe right, that there are 600 of them, 10% of them, that have the means, the ability, and the desire to go faster and fly higher and to fly a jet before they lose their metaphor. Because it's a, a lot of people say, yeah, hey, 50 years old, 55 years old, I want to fly a jet. And they have a passion to do that. And I believe we can attract a lot of those people. That's just one, that's 600, all right? Say that I'm wrong, cut that number half in two and make it 300. Cut it half in two again, that's 150, all right? You add 150 units to our 280 units, and Eclipse has got something really special going on here. You take that same math we add to the Kessel product, and now we've got something even crazy going on. And that gives us the leverage to get even more products in the product line. 
But it's that kind of simple math. You know, and we haven't even touched upon all the other types of markets that are around the world with the 7.1 billion people that are in our population today. So there's a lot of growth potential here as well, too. So I think the market's really the bus. If I had an airplane guy, all right, running this business on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm going to give him the financial support and backing to make sure that he's got the tools and needs to execute along with Ken and the rest of the team. And I don't think you've got a better combination of innovation today because we're smart in the way that we look at these things. So there's a lot of passion in this industry, all right? There's one thing I'm very, very passionate about. It's my money. So I get real passionate about that. So you've got to make the right financial decisions to take the right products into the general aviation market. And that gives the stability. I think I've proven that over the last five years. So that can be more than that now. And, and let me add, and thank you for the compliments. When, when, when we look at what money aviation is, it is very much about having a rational business structure. Uh, it, it does kind of annoy me when people go, oh, you're, you're just an airplane guy. No, 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 it's a rational business structure here. And when I hear just financial guys uh, not understand that, I assume that they're either missing data, which I know is often true. Or that they're not real business guys because there's a sound financial model here. Um, as Mason was talking about the different applications, one thing that I can throw off real quickly for the kids why they're listening to it. People say things in, I'm not talking to the media guys here, don't say that if they want a more efficient airplane, they'll get a turboprop because it's not true. I mean, that's just something that's just plain physics. The, it, the Kestrel will not be more efficient than the Eclipse. So when you use the word efficient, make sure you put it on the right side. But the Eclipse is unbelievably efficient because it flies higher, it flies faster, and, and that affects it. But the, what the turboprop does, it accelerates more air so you can get more weight off the ground in a shorter distance. And for some, that's a very, very important feature, but it's not efficient. Enough. Second thing that we often hear is uh, that the Eclipse is small. <laughs> Compared, to, I mentioned keeping my hand uh, in turbulence. Uh, the Eclipse is not small. It's an unbelievably comfortable airplane. So I think it's a different kind of compelling. We want to make sure that people have choices, but we have to educate them properly about the differences in those choices. Uh, last comment about the financing is, yeah, we're going to be continuing to raise money for Kestrel. Part of the change here, though, is that with this combination, uh, it, it's no longer a question of, so if you don't raise money fast enough, do you go out of business? No, it just takes longer. I was sort of misquoted or half quoted last week in Germany, where I said, if we sell enough eclipses, we will, we will fund Kestrel that way. And the other half of the question, answer was, but it'll take a really long time. And so no, we're still going to raise more money. Next question. Yep. Well, congratulations to you and Mr. Mason. Uh, I believe this is one of the major events if you consider international marketing aviation. Uh, well, that being said, uh, as Mr. Mason was uh, pointing out, there are 7.7 billion people all over the world. And if you consider the aircraft, there are approximately 330,000 aircrafts are there. And out of them, 66% are based in US. So how are you focusing the rest of the market? Are you adding something to your portfolio? Probably you avoided that question. Uh, I saw that. But, um, how are you trying to include them? Uh, are you seeing that what, what are they actually looking for? What are their needs? Or adding the portfolio, adding new design yourself, getting collaboration, or having a dealer location, or how are you trying to focus on okay, Can everybody hear that? Uh, the basic question is, what, what's our opinion? What are we doing about the rest of the world from an aviation point of view? And, and the answer is yes to most of that. Uh, and without a product announcement and still in the question asking phase, that, that's important to us. You know, the, the, the market will clearly shift, and for a lot of companies, including Cirrus before I left, 50% of our airplanes left the US. Uh, and, and that will continue to happen. And so I'm very interested in the growth of general aviation all around the world. I think China's going to be a very interesting market. India, Asia, South Africa, all of Africa, South America. There's just lots of places where people will benefit from airplanes, they just don't realize it yet. And, and we need to learn more about what their specific products are, but we have some opinions. Now, uh, just what we know in terms of what they are now, and we know obviously it's a challenge raising money in your company.
conversations with investors since one was announced that you were have you heard a change and you heard people now ready to open their wallets? Yes. Or more than that. Well, that, but anything about the capital development? So, okay. so raising money is, is obviously challenging for any business and even more challenging for the aviation. It would be nice if people could get the facts straight. They tend not to. There's, uh, there's always other factors in politics involved. Uh, we continue to see some issues with some of the places we've dealt with. Watch out, hit the back there. So, but with some of the places we've had economic development agreements, we've had, uh, or I should say economic development disagreements, we're, 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 we're trying to carefully navigate that. And we continue to get beat up by some of the places inaccurately. So it's still a challenge. We're comfortable that it's moving forward. Yes, the, the answers change because this does answer a lot of the, the questions for those people. And as we continue to educate financial people, we're very comfortable that they can see that this business model provides the right kind of returns that makes it an attractive investment. Seeing the rationale. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the question was about geographic locations. Is there consolidation? And, and you're right, Mason's in Charleston, Ken's in Chicago, I'm in Superior, all of us are in Albuquerque at different times, I'm in Maine part of the time. Nope, that, that's the way life is, that's not gonna change. There, there isn't, uh, we're not changing the engineering staff in Superior, we're not changing the engineering and service work that gets done in Chicago, we're not changing the manufacturing that gets done stay in uh, Albuquerque, uh, and we don't know where we're going to manufacture the test we have. Maybe in Wisconsin. But why don't you talk a little bit more about the operation where Chicago, Albuquerque, Albuquerque. For those of you who don't understand how Eclipse and now kind of special this combination is going to work, uh, we are going to be a global company. So I'd like to make sure that everyone understands we're going to have a global presence. Yes, that means overseas as well. That means other markets as well. Uh, right now, uh, in Chicago, Eclipse has uh, engineering staff. It has a very large service center. Uh, kind of with the public stunt works that gets them out of there and so forth. That's going to remain in Chicago. Albuquerque is going to be our, our corporate headquarters. It's going to be where we do our production. It's going to be where we do our engineering. It's going to be where our sales and service uh, organization is going to emanate from. So that's a very important part of, of who we are as one aviation, that will change. Very fortunate to have uh, a Kessel's engineering team. We have an engineering team and staff up in Superior. Uh, we have opportunities in, in Maine. Those are going to be brought upon and called upon to contribute both to the one aviation concept as well as to grow their individual product lines as well. So that's not going to change. So from an operational perspective, uh, we're no different than, and we're not the same size, but we're no different than a Boeing or other Rocky Mart or any other organization that has an expanse, its, its, its reach, and opportunities, we're going to be seen in multiple locations. So hopefully that will answer some of your questions. We have great staff and great, and great, great employees, great associates, as we call them. In all these locations, we're not going to lose that talent and try to move them to one location and consolidate. It just doesn't make sense. So does that apply? So where do these departures the company? Is that That's a good question. And, and to answer your question, as Alan would, yes. And to further expound upon that, uh, PCL was, was a great great partner of ours as well, building methodologies and tails and so forth. But we have done analysis, and, and this is, uh, should I say, prior to Alan's involvement and so 
notebook for the last two or three years as we were developing our project. And we've decided that it's much more efficient for us to bring that uh, product in-house. And the manufacturing uh, that PZL was going to do was going to take place in Albuquerque. And that is already underway right now. And so very shortly in the near future, probably before the end of the year, right, Mason will be producing our own farm tails and ethanols. And again, kind of of scale, efficiencies is what's going to drive the aviation. But with a slightly different answer on the contract. Right. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll expand on that, though, Tom, on the PCL thing. Um, Jeff Pino and I, when we were first started working on this with Sikorsky, we were talking about the PCL relationship, which, for everybody's benefit, is a subsidiary of Sikorsky. So uh, we did a make buy analysis to determine it was about a break even, to go either way. And Jeff said, hey, let's feed this business to PCL because they can use the extra work. And that was the decision point at that time. Now we've looked at it, and since we're leaving the support ski relationship, since the price is about the same, I would rather strengthen my core staff in Albuquerque, and also I would rather control the design and the build of that product in-house. I think we're going to create more efficiency in building the product, not only in cost, but also in quality. If you, if you guys remember this uh, company, Boeing, you got the 787, and they got, you know, there's only really two assembled jets in the world, the 787 and the Eclipse. The concept was we're going to have everybody else build their parts, then we're just going to assemble it in a building. So, uh, well, it, it's, you can't separate your supply chain so far and lose control over quality and timing. So I think it was a really good move, and this is a great opportunity for us to do this. And uh, so we are a global company, but the more things I can build in-house in the United States, I want to do for our staff. I think it's an important thing to strengthen the company in that, in that regard. So, they were good guys. Dan, talking about a third product. Is that, would that be a derivative of something you're already working on? Is it something new? And would you, or is that something that you would acquire or consolidate in another company? Well, it's being supersonic. Actually, we spend a fair amount of time going back and forth to China. So I used Product could be developed within or acquired. Amphibious, well, that's every different thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
based on your capabilities and, and encouragement from the company as far as you want to go. So the training environment is something I think you're going you're to see in the near future really, really improve and marketed and hit hard by the Eclipse. This is a wonderful airplane. We have all these young airline captains and pilots that need to be fed into the airlines, both domestically as well as internationally. What better additional trainer than the Eclipse? We teach them in a glass cockpit with sophistications, auto products. Again, we underestimate the capabilities of this aircraft. There's never been produced in aviation history a Part 23 aircraft with auto products. What does that do? It starts to get the pilot the sophistication and capabilities that they may never see in their lifetime at least traditionally. So one of the answers to your question is I think you're going to see a very, very big push in the near future into the training environment. And it's just not for the single engine instrument made pilot. It's for all pilots. And, and, and the message is anyone can fly the Eclipse. And we, the company, are going to help you do that. We're going to help you be a better pilot. We're going to help you be a more efficient pilot. We're going to help you be more comfortable in the aircraft, in the airspace that you fly, and so forth. And so one of the areas Again, yeah, I'm going to keep hitting on it, is training. The other opportunities we have is we overlook the gentleman or the young lady or the business associate that wants to sit in the back. We talk about costs, we talk about efficiencies. This is a very efficient airplane to move people, two or three people, six to seven hundred nautical miles back and forth to increase business efficiencies. And if you look at the standard, I think Mason has quoted this before, NBAA standard, 70% or 80% of the people that fly in a jet today is only two passengers. 2.3 passengers. So again, the size of the Eclipse is, is extremely well, well suited for that type of mission. So as a company going forward with, with, our, with our marketing efforts and our sales efforts and Allen's leadership and Mason's leadership, we're going to penetrate those markets. And so please, please watch for that because the plane is much more versatile than I think we've been given credit for. And I was going to say something similar, but I was going to start differently by saying I think what you're asking about is the market more than you're asking about the, the, the which product. And what we intend on doing is making sure that with all these products, we're addressing different markets. Now, obviously, right now, we're in the personal transportation market. And because of who we are and what we've done, the, the time I've spent in the Eclipse is so compelling that you can't help but get excited about what it would mean for your own kind of transportation. But in fact, the business model, what we also recognize is there are all these other markets for a variety of airplanes. So it, whether it's the, the training thing that we've talked about or the now thoroughly discredited phrase air taxi, but someday it's going to happen. There's a, a whole different range of places where all of these products will fit, and we're going to make sure we're looking at all. As we look at expand products, any thought of the Eclipse 400 so far? Plenty of thought about it. We have one for sale. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what your question was, is there a 400 in the future? No. But well, we do have one for sale. <laughs> <laughs> there is a product for sale, just one. No, it, 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 it does, it, when, when, you, when you lay out sort of logically of capability and cost and manufacturing, there, there isn't really a product. And does the push the trade market? Tell you that that's a big market, just not here in the United States. It's just not talking about the military. We're talking about the Forest Service. We're talking about the State Department. We're talking about the local and state governments utilizing this aircraft for a myriad of reasons, whether it's training or actual mission uh, profile. And uh, that is for TV. Uh, even if we're a company that we're known for not making all these promises and not providing or uh, delivering all those promises, I think we're a company that's starting to be known. We just do it, we get it done. So we're, we're actively pursuing several different military uh, training initiatives. Uh, the one that's most hot and most in the press is the T1A program. Um, we can save um, billions of dollars into that program, that's with a B. Uh, and uh, uh, there's 178 of the Beast Jet uh, 400s that are 20 some odd years old that are in need of replacement. And uh, the Eclipse is the perfect fit for that. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're pursuing that project very aggressively, very actively. Um, when we say aggressive and active, 
that's a little different than the way government procurement works. So, you know, we've got, you know, how an American, about where I live, but oh my God, what an inefficient process. So, uh, but uh, we keep saying, hey, we can save you billions, pay attention to us. People are listening, congressmen are listening, we got a lot of support uh, on the Hill, and uh, we have a lot of support through the high ranks of the, uh, our top down approach to the military as well, too. So you'll see the, the eclipse in a military training environment, most likely in a U.S. military training environment first, but you also see it. Remember that not only do we have multiple branches of military in our country, there are multiple branches of military in many other countries around the world as well, too. And we're pursuing a lot of different avenues around that. So uh, I'd like to get the, the U.S. Uh, military initiative going first, because that's going to be the rubber stamp that a lot of other companies use, or countries use, and you're going to start to see that progression go down the line. So it's uh, a great, great training vehicle in the military. So I'm glad you brought it up. It's so really exciting. Other questions? Take a couple more. And we'll break. So, yeah, so there's nothing else in the military. It's not what I'm going in the complete opposite direction. Uh, you asked about the LSA on up with trainers on all up. Uh, you know, Nina Friedrich shot from last week. Really is cool what, what's going on in Europe in terms of the white area draft. I don't see that in our future anytime real quickly because there's a bunch of financial issues that, that challenge that end of the market. Having said that, if we as an industry don't figure out how to make sure that there's a low cost path in can't be so short-sighted to say, I don't care, we make a big margin on our product, because if we don't keep that critical mass, we lose the FBOs and we lose the airports and we lose the way we pay for air traffic control. And it's a really bad future if we don't figure out how the light is for us. One last question, and then we can start to leave. Good, that's a really good last question. So thank you very much for coming.